Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to have a look at what kind of COVID plans are on offer in Hong Kong and if you should purchase one. Let's get started. Unlike the rest of the world, Hong Kong has opted for a zero COVID strategy, which is debatable in its effectiveness given the surging number of cases each day due to the Omicron variant. The latest is a call for a citywide compulsory testing, which would happen in the next month or so. The key is if you test positive, you'll be sent off to one of Hong Kong's several quarantine facilities, which is something not to be taken lightly, especially if you have a family. So would a COVID-19 insurance plan assist you in any way, and who is it for? So let's take a look at some more facts. If we reference the Financial Times for some more data, we can actually see that the elderly vaccination rates for Hong Kong and Macau are extremely low. Specifically, on March 1st, those age 80 or above, there's only about a 30% vaccination rate for two jabs or two doses of the latest uh, vaccine. For Macau, it's even lower at 17.9. So relatively, places like Singapore, Japan, their elderly population are highly uh, vaccinated already. So Hong Kong and Macau, our elderly are extremely at risk. Politics aside, there's a latest rush for many companies to actually assist and help and give back to the community. The latest being some sort of benefit or protection if one gets infected with the COVID virus. Let's have a look. All right, so banks and insurance companies are also getting involved, specifically giving benefits such as hospital cash benefits, if you get infected and have to go to hospital, and also COVID vaccine side effects benefits. So let's have a look. So if we have a look at the independent ranker and independent body called Ten Life, which ranks various insurance companies and their various, various products, we can have a look at, in terms of quarantine cash benefit, if we scroll down, it has a list of different insurers and sort of the different coverage periods and the amounts, okay? So if we have a look at the, the various insurers, there's only a, a few here. We have hospital cash, that's sort of 700 to 800 per day for 45 days, 14 days, 45 days, or per year. And then we also have a look at different eligibility, different benefits, etc., etc. So there is some sort of hospital cash benefit from the insurers. If we have a look at the side effects benefit, also referencing 10 life at this stage, we can have a look, they actually have a chart down here that has all the various insurers sort of in two rows and the different products that offer vaccine side effects. And the definition of a side effect according to the World Health Organization on an adverse event following immunization is as follows. Basically, it's grouped into five different categories. There's vaccine product related reactions, vaccine quality defect related reactions, immunization error related reactions, anxiety related reactions, and coincidental events. And basically it can be classified into one of the following categories, which is an allergic reaction, a local reaction, a systemic reaction, and also a neurological disorder. So that's the definition from the WHO. So keeping that in mind with regards to either having a hospital benefit or a vaccine side effect benefit, we have a look at some of the various insurers and banks. For example, DBS, it covers you know, side effects. They partnered up with Manulife in this stage. And you can see down here that they have pre-hospitalization outpatient cash benefits, $300. And here it is, the hospital cash benefit of $800 a day, limited to one stay up to 14 days, compassionate death benefits, etc. If we have a look at other insurers, such as Zurich, this one's specific for travel. They also incorporating uh, COVID clauses into there. Okay. And then if we look at EXA, same thing. Hospital income, if you're infected with COVID, uh, in this case, Hong Kong dollars, uh, $700 uh, per period up to 45 days. Same with AIA, which actually have a free vaccination side effect cover if you already have a policy, so it's incorporated in there, as well as hospital cash benefit of $800 a day up to 14 days. So you get the idea. 
and the last one is Prudential as well. So all these major insurance companies and banks have various offers to their public and to their clientele. So that sort of gives you a general idea of what's actually offered in the insurance realm for COVID. So the key question is, should you purchase COVID insurance or not? And for myself, I personally did, for my family, I think that the benefits far outweigh the costs. On the horizon, we're gonna have compulsory testing of everyone in Hong Kong. That will probably trigger more and more people going to these quarantine facilities. And for that, you should be compensated somewhat. So that's where this insurance would kick in. Additionally, if in the meantime, you had to go to a hospital and you're confined to a general ward or an ICU, for example, that's something not to be taken lightly as well. And you should also be compensated for that. And for a little bit of money, you know, this benefit would be applicable. So let's have a look at the plan that I've actually bought, and that's the FWD COVID care plan. All right, so as a plug, I'm actually an agent at FWD. We do a lot of medical and premium financing, as you know, on this channel. But there's actually no real bias here, simply because this product can't be purchased right now due to the overwhelming surge of cases of Omicron and COVID in Hong Kong. They've actually stopped selling this product. But if this or other products similar to it do come back onto the market, then here are some of the product features which I think you might want to have a look at. So if we have a look at some of the features, the coverage is sort of one year and it's not restricted to any occupation. The waiting period is 14 days, which is very short. And the reason it's 14 days is because usually in between doses of vaccines, there's at least a two week waiting period. So also side effects of a vaccine are covered up to 30 days after you've received the vaccine. And there's no limit on the number of vaccines that you get for the next year ahead. So there are talks of actually maybe a fourth booster once they've solved the Omicron uh, variant, the specific dose for that. So if we have a look at the benefits, they're generally divided into two groups. One, as we said before, is for quarantine benefits. The other is for vaccine side effect benefits. Now for vaccine side effect benefits, I don't know about you, but talking to many people and ourselves, we've only had maybe side effects for half a day, one day, very small, it might be a fever or muscle pains or things like that. So in this regard, I'm not going to go to a hospital to fix myself if any symptoms occur. I'll probably just stay at home and let this side effect pass. So in this regard, um, I don't feel that we really need a need for this side effect. However, if we have COVID and we need to go to the hospital, then there, we should be compensated. And that's where the top part comes in, where there's a daily hospital cash of $500 for 42 days. If it's in the ICU, something more serious, it's up to $1,000 for 21 days. And the daily cash for compulsory quarantine under Hong Kong government's instructions, if sickness is diagnosed, is $500 for 14 days or $7,000 in limit. So that's actually the key one where if we are all tested positive and we're sent to mandatory quarantine, this would kick in. And the annual premium for that is 245, so very little for roughly what you could claim. So it's really a no brainer. I just bought it for the wife and kids. It's very simple. So the benefit cost is actually quite good. The cost is relatively very small for potentially a bit of benefit that you can claim back. And obviously the key is not to go to the hospital. However, if you do, you should be compensated somewhat. And another thing that I like is that this is actually a separate standalone plan. It's not linked to your current medical plans or your current uh, critical illness plans or any other plan that you potentially might have because that with the number of claims might actually increase the premiums overall for your medical plan for the next year. So I like that it's a standalone plan. It makes it actually a bit more nimble and if I don't need it, I'll just cancel it. So overall, I think these plans are optional. However, if you have young kids or seniors in your household who may not have gotten their vaccines here in Hong Kong, I think there might be a case for it just in case they go to the hospital and you wanna be compensated for that. For others that are already vaccinated, knowing that there is a mandatory 
testing that's going to happen in Hong Kong over the next several weeks or months. And that there is a lot of hidden or people that are not reporting their positive that are staying at home in Hong Kong. I think the risk is actually very high where these cases will just swell and many people will be positive, many people will need to go to these quarantine facilities, in which case I think you should be compensated for. So all in all, public hospitals should be avoided at all costs because if something happens to you right now, your friends and your family cannot come and visit you. Which also means that you should have a very comprehensive private medical and stay in a private hospital. And I've actually done a video on that of the medical that I chose, which is very comprehensive and very inexpensive as well. And I'll link that in the description below. But for now, that's it for this video. I hope you found the content useful and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.